chest. Good morning, everyone. We're going to start our worship service this morning. Let's all join together and sing, Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely. 
Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. I can feel His mighty power and His grace. I can hear the brush of angels' wings. I see glory on each face. Surely the presence of the Lord is in this place. Good morning, church. It is very good to be here. I especially feel that this morning. How many of you were escorted onto the church property by a police officer this morning? <laughs> yeah, I think uh, I, 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 uh, I was escorted here and uh, trying to get here on time. I, I broke the law. I did ask uh, Gregory if it was still okay if a criminal was serving on the, the platform, but, uh, but uh, it is good to be here. Uh, he was very kind, by the way, nice guy, and Gregory tried to uh, witness to him, in fact, I think, so. Um, <clears throat> you know, my family continues to give me a hard time over and over about how slowly I drive. I hope this convinces you. <laughs> So, just a couple of uh, announcements and reminders. Um, well, first of all, uh, you know, welcome to everybody here. Uh, is, is there any visitors here this morning for the first time? Excellent. Welcome. Welcome. We hope you come back. We hope you come back. We'd love to have you. So, um, one of the most important reminders is that there is potluck after church today. So, uh, please uh, stay by and... Um, We'd, we'd love to get to know, get to know you guys. So uh, the other things that I want to remind you about, uh, Ian Jerome, um, Vespers, January 14. Um, um, I, most of you, I think, probably remember Ian. Uh, he's, a, uh, he's a pastor of the Smyrna Church, and he's done end-time events for us in the past, but he will be here for Vespers on January 14. Uh, health ministries programs coming up, uh, dinner with a doctor, uh, you know, I think that's uh, going to be exciting stuff that we're going to be looking forward to uh, as we move forward. And just a reminder also about the uh, 9 o'clock prayer time on Sabbath morning. Um, uh, uh, give, that, uh, give that some consideration. Come. That's what I was rushing in for this morning, but um, uh, it's, uh, it's, it's, a good, it's a good thing to do. We're praying for our church. Uh, in the absence of a pastor, we're praying for the for uh, Pastor Raduli, and uh, uh, and and various other things that we really need to put uh, put it to prayer, and so we're doing that at nine o'clock on Sabbath morning. So try not to for forget that. Let's bow our, let's bow our heads. Father, we ask that the Holy Spirit fill this place this morning. We ask that uh, that you be lifted up in words and in music. So when leaving today, that we will find ourselves just maybe a little bit closer to you and more willing to be faithful servants for you. Amen. Well, how many of you all remember back the first Sabbath in October when a challenge was issued and $100 bills were being handed out. Anybody remember that? <coughs> a few of us, yeah. The challenge was, I'll refresh your memory, the challenge was that the church would give members $100 
and they were to use the hundred dollars either to start a new ministry or to help someone um, answer a need and then we were going to hear a report about what took place how were those hundred dollar bills used now I've heard from a few of you but I haven't heard from everyone so is there anyone that wants to share I have a little video we're going to show and a picture or two um, I know that Shelly the McLennan family over here Addie and RJ raise your hand Addie and RJ they each got a hundred dollars and they went shopping right RJ yes they went shopping for a little a friend that needed some uh, new clothes did you buy toys too or did you just buy clothes do you remember just clothes they bought what was needed right that was good anybody else use their hundred dollars to help someone Okay, Chad. Uh, we ordered several Bible studies through Amazing Facts, and I started a Bible study on home. Oh, good. And have someone coming who's been asking several questions and curious about what we believe and uh, why and that kind of thing. So well, good. That's, that's been good. Well, church family, let's keep that as a matter of prayer. The Bible study going on in Chad and Kristen's home. That's how they use the money. Let's look at a little video. You guys ready to show a video? Okay. We hear that helping others when you are going through a difficult time helps you to feel better. It is true. Making those toys was my therapy, and it made me so happy. I love to serve. Making 100 wooden toys for the rescue mission was a labor of love. I hope this video inspires you to step out and help others in ways that you've never thought of before. As you've ever seen, and Mark and Lucia spent a number of hours putting that together, didn't you? Yes. And I'm sure the children at the rescue mission, they have a whole family services um, division. I'm sure they enjoyed getting those new toys. Uh, anybody else have a, have a thing to share? I know we had a few more $100 bills going out. All right, let me show you. One more picture, okay? Oh, it's up there. This is an established ministry in the city of Roanoke. It's fairly new. It's been here about four or five years. It is the least of these. And uh, they offer a, a place to go for the homeless. They don't have a sleeping place, but they recently bought a school bus of all things. And they keep the school bus running all night long um, during these cold nights. And they allow people to come in and, and get out of the cold into a warm place. They also offer showers and a meal here and there and food and clothing to the extent that they can. They're not nearly as big as the Roanoke Rescue Mission, but they do a similar kind of work. And so Tim and I donated our funds to this ministry. So like Mark said in the, in the video, 
each of us are called to minister to one another. And I challenge us to continue throughout the year looking for ways that we can serve others, that we can help where the need is great. Thank you very much. Let's do some singing together this morning. Let's all stand and sing, All Hail the Power of Jesus' Name. Let's all stand this morning. Angels prostrate fall, bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Bring forth the royal diadem and crown him Lord of all. Let every hatred on this terrestrial ball to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord of all to him all majesty ascribe and crown him Lord singing. Praise him, praise him. Praise him, praise him, Jesus our blessed redeemer. Sing O earth, his wonderful love proclaim. Hail him, hail him, highest archangels in glory. Strength and honor give to his holy name. Like a shepherd, Jesus will guard his children. In his arms, he carries them all day long. Praise him, praise him, tell of his excellent greatness. Praise him, praise him. Ever in joyful song. Praise Him, praise Him, Jesus our blessed Redeemer. Heavenly portals loud with hosannas ring. Jesus, Savior, reign it forever and ever. Crown Him, crown Him, prophet and priest and king. Christ is coming over the world victorious. Power and glory unto the Lord belong. Praise Him, praise Him, tell of His excellent greatness. Praise Him, praise Him, ever in joyful song. song this morning will be thou my vision. Be thou my vision, O Lord of my heart, not be all else to Oh, 
I heed not nor man's empty praise. Thou mine inheritance now and always. Thou and thou only first in my heart. I King of heaven, my treasure. say good morning church happy new year to you all are you happy to be here this morning God is good we truly serve a mighty God if I know there's a lot of things is going on a lot of person are hurting but I just don't want you to be discouraged I want you to take everything to God in prayer because he's the one can fix it for us our friends is not good enough to fix it for us we just need to take everything we have to God in prayer. If you want to come and join me with prayer this morning, feel free to do so. And let us worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness in prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Pure and holy. God and our Heavenly Father, we come before you today broken and spilled out. Lord, I pray that you will remake us and make us humble servants of thee. Lord, you know the struggles of your people. There are many in requests verbally while there are many unsaid I pray Lord that you will reach each and every one arts today grant us the desire of our hearts Lord we pray Lord we know you are all powerful help us just to turn everything over to you the one who can fix, the one who can heal whatsoever we are going through. Please be with every family member here, Lord. I pray you will heal those who are sick among us. Those who are brokenhearted, Lord, I pray that you will bring comfort to such soul. We know that Satan job is to separate us as christian but lord i pray that we will unite in one body and worship you who is our maker and our king we thank you for the leading of this church lord i pray you continue to 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 be with this church we know that the enemy want to destroy this church but lord i pray that you will be with this church. Dear God, spoil the enemy's plans towards our lives. Lord, we know that you are faithful and just. So whatsoever we fail to ask you, Lord, we pray that you will grant it unto us according to thy will. 
Let self be crucified and Jesus be exalted. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. Even for a pastor that was with us, Lord, I pray you continue to be with him and his family. Help us all as members to support each other in whatever way we can. We are called to be servant of you, Lord. Help us to represent you in everything that will bring someone closer to you. Help us in our going out, in our coming in. Thank you for everything you have done for us and what you are about to get done through us. In Jesus' mighty name I pray. Amen. kids come on up it's time for the lamb's offering and a story have a seat up here kids come on hi yeah oh you still got a couple more <laughs> hi morning come on up they don't bite not much, okay? Not much. <laughs> Morning, kids. How are you today? Yeah? Well, I've got a, sto a cool story for you. Come on in, hon. Yeah. story goes like this. There was an elderly Chinese woman, and she had two big pots that she would hang on a pole so she could walk all the way, a long walk down to the stream and get water. Now, one of the pots is perfect one had a bit of a crack in it so every day she would go fill up the two pots and take the long walk all the way back to her house but by the time she got there there was only a pot and a half full of water this went on for day after day week after week after two years the crack pot thought to itself I am so miserable because I don't get all that water all the way back to her house and he said to her one morning while she was at the creek, she says, I'm so ashamed because I can't do what I was made to do. And the woman looked down at him and smiled and said, have you seen the side of the, of the path where you go? It's full of flowers. And so every day when we walk back, you water them every day. I saw that crack in you. I knew you had that, so I planted flower seeds all along the path. And for the last two years, I've been able to pick the flowers and been able to decorate our, our, our table. I want you to know that you're okay just the way you are. So kids, anyone have any idea what the moral of that story is? Go ahead, honey. Anybody else know what the moral of the story is? Mm, we've got a quiet bunch here today, huh? Okay. Well, the story is not just for you, but it's also for all, of, all the adults here, too. The, the moral of the story is it's just like God. God loves you just the way that you are. And the way that you are brings a lot of beauty into the world. All right, kids. We've got the baskets right, behind, uh, right here. Oh, here they are, the baskets. And uh, this week it's for, uh, we've got recruitment materials for the school. It's really important. We'd like to get some more uh, students here and also let everyone else know about what a great school we have. Thanks. Hey, you want to say something? Okay, just a moment more. Go ahead. 
children. Jesus always makes the world and gives us for church budget. 90 years ago this year, in 1933, the first Roanoke Seventh-day Adventist Church began. I don't remember a whole lot. I was pretty young. I was only 10 or 11 years old. Did you all catch that? Yeah. <laughs> I think you believe me. Uh, but... Anyway, then in 1938, the church and school on Memorial Avenue was built. Then most recently, we moved here from Memorial Avenue uh, in, in 2008. That's just 15 years ago. I'm just curious, how many, uh, how many of you all in here today uh, worshiped at the Memorial Seventh-day Adventist Church? Raise your hands. That's amazing to me. That means... Everybody else has come here and been worshiping with us in the last 15 years. That's really cool. Really cool. Um, I bring this up because I think it's interesting, but it's, it's clear that this church has endurance. We have the same faithful body of believers here, different people, different folk, making up the body of this church today from 90 years ago with different spiritual gifts, such as music, teaching. We have a different building, for goodness sakes. But nevertheless, throughout the years, it's clear that the, the believers in this church believe then and believes today that this church is worth supporting with our faithful ties and offerings over the years. Today's offering is for our church budget, which, again, supports all of our ministries, um, but also, of course, provides heat, air conditioning, and helps us com to stay comfortable as we worship. I don't remember at all over the, over the time I've been a member of this church, and that is about 41 years, not 100 years. Um, I don't remember ever having the power cut off and and because we couldn't pay our bills. Thank God for that, amen? amen. So let's keep it up. It's, it's worth it. God's worth it, amen? amen. Will the ushers please come forward? Let's bow our heads.
Dear Father in heaven, we thank you for this church. We thank you for um, blessing us and, uh, throughout the years. And we ask now that you would be in a special way with these monies that go for your intended use and that with these monies will help reach someone for, you, for, you, for your message and to get you, your good news out there that you're coming soon. We thank you for loving us. In Jesus' name, amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Um, so, my name is Ambele, and I'm just going to be doing a special music. Um, but before I go into the music or the singing portion, I just wanted to use this opportunity to um, just thank God for being God in my life. And um, quite honestly, one of the best, best gifts I think my parents ever gave us was the opportunity to know Jesus for ourselves. Um, I've been in this country away from my parents for about eight years now, and when I look back, you know, there are my every single time um, I feel down, tired, depressed, worn out, if there's one person I can always talk to is Jesus, and he's always been present in my life, and sometimes that's through other people, um, and sometimes that's just the feeling of peace. But um, I'm always so thankful that um, I'm privileged to know him and to call him Father. Um, and so with that said, I'll go ahead and sing this song to give him glory um, and to just continue to walk in a stronger relationship with him and encourage you all to just continue to love him. Because the more you love him, the more you want to love him. And the more you know him, the more you want to know him. And it just gets better from there. Amen. Since I started for the kingdom, since my life he controlled, since I gave my heart to Jesus, the longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. 
The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. Every need he is supplying, plenteous grace he bestows. And every day my way gets brighter the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows. The longer I serve him, the sweeter he grows. The more that I love him, more love he bestows. Each day is like heaven, my heart overflows the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows each day is like heaven my heart overflows the longer I serve him the sweeter he grows the sweeter he grows. Amen. Thanks, Bill. The scripture this morning is from Proverbs chapter 3. Verse 5 and 6. And it reads, Trust in the Lord with all thine heart, and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Gregory? You know, this morning I really thought Gregory was going to plead on my behalf. That's right. He witnessed. He didn't plead for me, though. <laughs> Gregory is a great guy, and I'm so glad that he's preaching this morning. He, is, uh, he lacks an enthusiasm, but he sure is a faithful guy. <laughs> Let's pray. Father in heaven, we thank you for your faithful servant in Gregory. We ask that you would speak through him. May, your, may, your, may his words be your words. And again, we thank you and we love you. Amen. Amen. Oh, I guess you didn't hear me down there. Let me say good morning, church. Are you happy to be here this morning? If you're happy, you know you let me hear you say amen. amen. Come on, man. If you're happy, I need to feel you. If you're happy, you know you let me hear you say amen. amen. That's some better. You know, I always use this term. Um, people trying to um, maybe have a slice of cake, and they say, oh, this cake is so nice, but yet their face is like this. If it's nice, it should be like this. Wow. Right? So if you're happy and know it and I heard you say amen, I feel you the last time. God is good. What do you say? I just want to acknowledge a first-time member in our church today. You're visiting with us for the first time. I surely see a couple of friends right here. First time at the Roanoke Seventh-day Adventist Church. Wow. We welcome you in our church today. 
Are you a Seventh-day Adventist? Okay, but you know what? Since you're a Seventh-day Adventist, I want you to pardon with us here in Roanoke. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you two books, because it's two of you, and I want you guys to share it with someone this week when you go out there. One of the books is Step to Christ, and the next one is Desire of Ages. Anyone, brother, you want to come? My brother. Yes. Oh, man. I'm, get, I'm getting old. I'm losing names. Um, what's your name again, brother? <laughs> brother Cody. <laughs> All right. So share that book with someone this week and let them know that Jesus is coming and it's time to take that step for him. Anyone else visiting with us for the first time? Oh, and I'm seeing an next family down there. You see, I tell you, a step to Christ is what you need to take. I didn't take one with me this morning. I take two, and Brother Ron is on his way. I can always count on Brother Ron. Oh, yes, oh, yes. So, Brother Ron, I want you to share this one with that family around there. Are you guys Seventh-day Adventists? All right, the same principle, pardon with us. And if you ever want to change your church, right here is the best place, okay? Don't go around looking nowhere else, right here, all right? Because with God, all things are possible. Right do you say? Amen. So I just want to welcome you and say Happy New Year to you all today. But one thing I really want to talk to you about. You guys can't, you cannot continue like this. It has been last year since I've seen you guys. You guys need to come to church every Sabbath. You can't make it a year from a year to a church. That cannot work, right? So let, 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 let it be not um, 2024, I will see you again, right? I want to see you right through um, church, right? So let it not be you just worship one year. You all get the point, right? Last year was the last Sabbath of 2022, and this year is the first Sabbath of 2023. So for those who are visiting with us, they are not like that. They do come to church. Okay, they do come to church. All right, I want you to say thanks to Sister Emily for um, that beautiful song. I really enjoy your music. The longer I serve him, the sweeter, the sweeter it becomes when you're with Jesus. And Ella Lee, thank you very much for your kind words of introduction. I really appreciate you a lot. I did try on your behalf, brother. I tried, I tried, but... I hope he take a step to Christ. <laughs> yes, yes. All right. So it has been a wonderful time worshiping with you guys. And, you know, the more we worship is the more we know each other. And I just want to commend you for your faithfulness and just continue work for the Lord. Don't look for man for your reward. Jesus Christ himself will pay you. And whatsoever we put in, that's the wages we will receive. So I encourage you today to give it all. Give it your best shot. Just like you're working for the promotion. Give it your best shot. And Jesus will pay you for what you do. So my friends, as I said, 2022 had been history. It has been a challenging year for many, I know. Will this year be any difference? No. Because the closer we get to Jesus, is the more the challenges will come. Because Satan's job is to, to, to pull us apart and to destroy God's church. But my friends, I want to encourage you today. Hold on to Jesus' unchanging hand. Hold on to his unchanging hand. So at this time, let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your mercy. We thank you for your grace. Help us to be humble in your presence. Crucify self within us, Lord, and place Jesus in us. Lord, we are nothing without you. So we ask you, please, to come and take full control. Even today, let Gregory Goodner not be seen, but the message that will go forward, it will be straight from thy throne. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. So let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptably in your sight, my Lord and my strength, my Redeemer. Jesus is his name. Amen. 
I came across a post this week on Facebook. A good friend of mine posted it. It's all about a hymn that was written in 1836. But that hymn is still going strong. The title of the hymn is Another Year is da Dawning. My friends, I like the way verse 1 says, it says, another year is dawning. Dear Father, let it be. In work or in waiting, another year with thee. Another year is of progress. Another year of praise. Another year of proving thy present all thy days. Verse 2. Another year of mercy, another year of faithfulness and grace. Another year of gladness in shining of thy face. Another year of learning thy loving breast upon thy loving breast. Another year of trusting of thy quiet and happy rest. And I like the way this song ends. It said, another year of service. And this is what I want to zero in on today. Another year of service. Of witness for thy love. Another year of training for holier work above. Another year of dawning. Dear Father, let it be. On hurt or health in heaven. Another year for thee. So my friends, today, my sermonette, I want to speak with you on the topic, be a servant. Be a servant. And Lord, as we reach out to you another time, let your word go forward with power and clarity. In Jesus' name, amen. What do, I should say, what does it mean to be a servant? A servant is a royal and obedient. Person to his master, even when it is not convenient. We serve the Lord by recognizing our spiritual gift. And enthusiasm, investing them in ministry of the church. Regardless of the level of our gift, God expected us to invest ourselves boldly for his glory. He expected us to invest our time, our money, whatever we can give towards this great ministry. We are living in the closing time of earth history. God is calling his people. He wants us to be humble servant. God expects us to stand firm, comes what may. So my friends, the road will be rough. The battle will be tough. But God is expecting us to stand firm for him. What do you say? My friends, as faithful servants, he wants us to carry out his work so that others can come and taste and see and enjoy the blessing you and I are enjoying today. Yes, as I said, the challenges for 2022 was great. But this year, will it be any easier? No, 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 no. As I said, the closer we get to Christ, the battle will be rough. There are many that put their life on the line for Christ. When you look back at our, our, our servants, some were beheaded, some were placed into oil, some 
What even crucified? Uh, it was Peter who was crucified upside down. Will it be any easier for us? No, 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 no. God expects us to stand firm for him comes what me. I just want to encourage you, remember, when Jesus is in the vessel, we can what? Smile at the storm. I like the way the book of Philippians chapter 4 and verse 13. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's all about Christ. The Bible says in Philippians 4 and verse 13, I can what? Do all things to who? To Allah. To who? To man. To who? No, 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 no. To Christ who strengthened me. So my friends, all we have to do is to turn it over to the Lord and he will strengthen us. It is time for God's people to be sold out for Jesus. Put on spiritual muscles. For those who go to the gym they, and want to maintain a nice shape, whether you are male or female, it, it, it takes a lot out of you, right? It, you will have to put yourself to the challenge. Will I, I pump two muscles today or will I lift 50 pounds tomorrow? It is a challenge. So is it with us as Christians. It will not be easy. Challenges will come. But with Jesus, we can do it. So my friends, as I take you down this message, be a servant. Be a servant is not always easy. When I look back at the life of Jesus, the king of all kings, instead of waiting for his feet to, to be washed, what did he do? Jesus went over and he washed his disciples' feet. The message in that I receive, that God wants us to lead by example. God wants us to be humble. It's not about pride. It's not about fame. But it's all about being humble. You cannot be a servant and not humble. If you are working with a person and he's paying your wages, when he, when he commands you to do something, you, quick, you kindly do it because you want to make sure you get paid on Friday. Right? So you will kindly go and do it. So is it. I want to remind you, a payday is coming. And Jesus Christ himself will pay us for what we do. So my friends, in order to be successful in this case, we need not to what? Learn, lean on our own understanding. That comes to us from our scripture reading this morning, which is Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 and 6. Explain, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean on your own understanding. Is that what in the Bible? I'm not hearing you. you, you I give you the, the, the privilege to correct me if I'm going wrong this morning. Okay? Okay? I want to hear you. I want to know if you're hearing me down there today. As I say, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. Lean not on your own understanding. But in what? All your ways acknowledge him. And he what? shall direct thy path. So my friends, if you want to be a faithful servant, you must depend on God. You must turn it over because with Him, you can do it. But if it left up to self, first you will think about the person you will be serving. You will think of all the things or even mistake persons have committed Years ago, but when you let go and be that humble servant God wants you to be, it's a different case. God have a divine work for us to do, but self must be crucified in order for Jesus to be glorified. It's not all about you or all about me. 
We have a great work to do. And it is, a, it is a great privilege to be a part of this great movement. So whatsoever you find to do, do it with all your might. Whether you're short or tall, what color, what, what country, what, wherever or whatever. Whatsoever the Lord commands you to do, do it with all your might. What should be our mission as servant? Is it that God expected us to come to church Sabbath after Sabbath and just enjoy a message and then go home? Make it the next Sabbath, enjoy a message and go home? No. God expecting us to lead out as Jesus did. I like the way Matthew chapter 20 and verse 28. Matthew 20 verse 28. Jesus set an example for us. And I quote, the Bible says, The Son of Man came not to be what? Serve, but to what? Serve and to give his life. This is how far God wants us to think about serving. It's all the way. It's not a part way. And give, and give his life as ransom for many. Jesus pulled his life. Jesus, rather, Jesus put his life in ministry. He preached to the weak and needy sinners. He reached everyone of color. Whether short or tall, but as humble servant, Jesus set the example and we must follow. So it is the purpose of God that the gospel message should be what? Preach into all the world as a witness. The, man may, the mandate, rather, is given by the Savior of men in Mark chapter, 20, Mark chapter 16, verse 15 and 16. I would love for you to turn with me to Mark chapter 16, verses 15 and 16. Go ye therefore into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. And I like the way verse 16 put it. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be condemned. So our responsibility is to convince people for the kingdom. The call of the gospel ministry is a high calling. It is a wonderful privilege to be a part of it. As God's people, we must be identified with such movement. We are called to serve and not to be served. For example, the responsibility is twofold. It is not only to make disciples, but after making disciples, we have a job to do. And if you pitch them with me, many times we, 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 we will have campaign and we will have people come in the church. But sometimes they come through one door and leave through the other door. Because we don't spend time enough to nurture new believers. God is holding us responsible for this job. Our job is to bring people into Christ and also to bring them up to Christ. So we are called to be teachers. We are called to be preachers. And we need to do it to the glory of God. You see, Satan is very smart. You know? Remember, he was in high position. A lot of person kind of said, he's just that little man. But he was in high position. But God is greater. I will not exalt the enemy at this time. Because God is the only one who needs to be exalted. He know that 
we have a great responsibility to carry out. So sometimes what he do, he, 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 put, he try to tear us apart. Because he know once he can get the family, then he will get the church. But my friends, I want to remind him today that no gates of hell shall prevail over God's church. Because God has placed his high regard on his church. And Satan will never, ever succeed over God's church. So my friends, as I encourage you today, let yourself be available for God to use you. Be that humble servant that God wants you to be. Think about the people that are around you. And be that light that God wants you to shine. As I said, the church will stand triumphant. Testimonies to ministers, page 50. Two and 53 and I quote God as a church and she as a divine appointed ministry men appointed of God have been chosen to watch with ze jealous care with perseverance that the church may not be overthrown by Satan devices but that she will what? Stand firm in all the world to promote the glory of God. End of quote. As officers of the church, if you forget anything that I've said so far, do not forget this. Our main mission as servant is to do the will of the master. We are called to preach the undiluted on the diluting word of God. This is not the time where God's people should be compromising, but we need to speak, thus said the Lord. Gospel Workers, page 31, and I quote, To win soul to the kingdom of God must be our first consideration. With sorrow for sin and patient love, some of us, we are so impatient. The moment you, you try to work with someone and they are not coming your way, you write them off. What about if God should have done it with us? Where would we be today? Patient love. We must work as Christ work in unceasing effort. End of quote. As servant of God, we must come close in companionship with God in order to be successful. We are to represent God wherever we go. Not only in words, but in action, in life and in service. Our job is to speak, thus said the Lord. My friends, the pulpit is ordained for people to preach the word of God. Not to come here and critis criticize and break down each other. But it is dedicated to preach thus said the Lord. What do you say? Amen. This is not about favorite. This is not about um, exalting self. But it's all about Jesus. Preaching the word of God with grace. We need to have compassion upon people. Preaching the word of God, preaching his principles of his kingdom. I beg of you today, in your going out and in your coming in, represent Jesus with all your might. I shared this story in Sabbath school this morning. Where I stayed in, in, in South Carolina, somehow the Spirit tells me, Greg, do not book into a hotel. You need to stay with the guys at that house. We do have a house that we have these guys stayed when they go down there. And the Spirit said, Gregory, you need to be among those guys. And my friends, when I was there 
And I listened to the, to the voice of these guys. They are hurting. My friends, this wake me up said, as Christians, we, we really have a great work to do. So my friend, I encourage you, wherever you go, just remember, your church brother might not see you. Our church sister, but there is one above who always see. So we need to represent him wherever we go. Colossians chapter 3 and verse 16. I like the way the Bible put it right here. It said, let your word of Christ dwell what? Within you richly in all wisdom and teaching. Admonishing one another in psalms, in hymns, and spiritual song. Singing with what? Grace in your heart to the Lord. Don't watch those who are around you. If you are called to teach, teach. If you are called to reach, go and reach someone. If you are called to preach, preach. Whatsoever you can do, do it with all your glory to God. If it is to sing like my dear sister, sing. That's what God called you to do. Do it to the glory of God. My friends, as I said, it's all about Jesus. God is depending on us to do this work. Christ has set the example for us to follow. So what does it really, really mean to be a servant? All servant of God motive must be centered all around Jesus Christ. A servant of God We are to acknowledge that God will always have the final say. Should have the final say. It should not be about you or about me. But we need to do let go and let God take control. In other words, our relationship with God should be top notch. We, we shouldn't be, when we are church, we are this holy thine. As the song says, I will be the Savior, holy thine. And when you go out there in the week, it's like you're wondering if the same person was singing holy thine. I, 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 learned, I learned this over the years that many people view us as Seventh-day Adventists. Happy Sabbath and Sabbath morning. And in the week, we pass them like we don't know them. It shouldn't be like that, brethren. We need to be seven-day Adventists. Seven-day Adventists. You got, you got the point? Not only on the seventh day, but seven-day Adventists. So every day we need to represent Christ. Okay? Also, as servant, we need to trust God and obey. We need to take whatever risks by walking Whatever risk it takes just to read someone for Christ, for the gospel's sake. Our determination should be all about preaching his word, reaching those who are low, and bring them up to Christ. My friends, Matthew verse 10, 39 says, 39 says, he that, find it, he that find it his life, what? Shall lose it. And he that loseth his life, for my sake, shall find it. So my friends, when we work for God, there is a great reward. Don't worry about what man can do to this body. Just worry about what God wants you to do. So church, let us let go of self and let, us, and let God take control. His power is limitless. Galatians 2 and verse 20. 
Galatians 2 and verse 20, the Bible says, For what? I am crucified with who? With Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but what? Christ lives who? Within me. And the life which I now live, in the flesh I live by faith of the Son of God, whom loved me and gave himself for me. My friends, I encourage all the leaders of the church today. You have given a task, whatever the Lord called you to do for 2023. I pray that you will give it your best shot. When we are at work, we give it our best shot, maybe just to make sure we, 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 we can put food on the table and maybe to, the more you work, you know, maybe there's a promotion is coming. Let it be with God's work that we give it our full hundred. What do you say? I encourage you today, please, by God's grace. It is not easy to be a servant, but... When you let go of this self and allow Christ to possess you, then doing his work will be easy. Because you're not no, no longer thinking about me, but I'm thinking about the one who died for me. So my friends, I encourage you today, let go and let him take control. Because we are nothing without him. Without him, I can do nothing. Without him, I am nothing at all. So as you go this week, if someone out there in need, let it be that you are the one, if possible, to reach out to such individual. Let us not look down on people because if Christ had done it, we wouldn't be here today. Christ he, he left everything that he had in heaven. And he came to be that humble servant. He could have stayed there, but he came to be that humble servant. And he died so you and I can have the opportunity to be here today. What would be your call today? Will it be to just be at church week after week without having a great mission in front of you? Will it be just your routine is Sabbath, then I have to go to church? Let it be that you will devote all your strength into ministry that God can be praised. My friends, be faithful. Soon Jesus will come and he will reward you for this great work that you are doing. God bless you. Let's all stand as we close this morning. Let's sing together, Make Me a Servant.
As the Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthened me. Friends, let us not depend on our own strength. With Jesus, all things are possible. Let us worship him. Let us be that humble servant. And let us do the will of the master. Let us pray. Oh God, we thank you for your words. We thank you for your people who have come out today. I pray that you bless each family member here, each household, Lord. I pray you help us to be humble in your sight. Help us to take up this task of being humble servants. Help us to do your will. Lord, help us not to depend on self. Help us not to lean on our own understanding. But in all our ways, acknowledge you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, sir.